in the last class uh, we were talking about the breaking distance right we had looked at how to calculate the breaking distance we had derived we had derived uh, from a very simple dynamics uh, relationship what should be the distance that uh, the vehicle would travel when we go from velocity v1 to velocity v2 or v2 to v1 rather okay now what we are going to do is to in order to calculate uh, the breaking distance we would now integrate it or rather v2 to v1 or I think that is what we wrote. Uh, we would like to look at what would be the breaking distance when the velocity or the final velocity is equal to 0 obviously you know it. So now uh, you can write down the integration what we did and then you can calculate what is the uh, distance that you would travel before we break the vehicle okay. Now this is the formula which we wrote. Uh, if I remember right this would be the I don't know whether I, I think that this is how we had we had given so that uh, should be v1 to sorry v1 to v2 I think this is how we wrote v dv divided by fb plus fr w we wrote also cos theta s and you can make cos theta s equal to 1 plus or minus w sin theta s plus r a. We said r a is the aerodynamic forces and uh, we just uh, replaced this with C a e into v squared and we said that v squared being there that will have an effect on integration and you can integrate this straightforward there is nothing very difficult about it C g to C A E ln of F B plus F R W cos theta S plus or minus W sin theta S plus C A E into V1 squared divided by F B plus F R W cos theta S. sin theta s plus C A E V2 square okay. Just uh, quickly I am not going to spend time you can do that. Then this is the distance travelled when the velocities vary by V1 to V2 or V2 V1 goes to V2. Now putting V2 is equal to 0 which is actually the stopping distance when the final velocity is equal to 0 this equation can you know you can write that equation to be So that gives you the stopping distance that you would get right. Remember why we wrote that gamma okay that is for rotational inertias and other things and we also defined what is called as the efficiency of braking remember that we said the efficiency of braking is simply that all the F that is to be spent goes to breaking the vehicle or in other words we said m a or m into the force that is the deceleration should be equal to w by or w by g will let me write that as w by g into d should be equal to if you remember w that is the normal load that is acting that is the weight multiplied by mu if you remember mu is equal to d by g 
and we said that that is the maximum uh, efficiency right so that's that's the reason that, that's one of the things that we wrote um, you can also say that the maximum efficiency is when the braking force okay is such that it has already compensated for all the rotating inertias in other words gamma b is equal to 1 okay it is compensated for it and the rest of it is available okay for in order to break the linear case so in which case we can uh, we can also write down the uh, minimum braking distance i will call this as minimum braking distance where we have f b uh, replaced by mu into w that is the braking force. So, this can uh, minimum braking uh, let, let me write it here okay. let me s is equal to gamma b w divided by 2 g c a e natural log 1 plus c a e into mu n squared mu into w because that is the minimum all the forces go to plus f r w break the vehicle plus or minus w sorry sin theta s ok. So, that gives the minimum breaking, breaking distance I am I am just copying it is a nothing nothing very difficult if there is any questions on this all of them are just forces. Okay, I just did not want to leave any of the things and that is the reason why I am carefully writing it, uh, but concept wise they are all very simple. So, that is the minimum breaking distance. One of the things that is important where now a lot of research is going on is on the time lag between a driver applies the brake and the force is realized, okay. uh, the braking force is realized. This becomes very important because there will always be a time lag. Okay. This time lag is due to right from application, we are talking about right from application to the point when the force is felt at the brakes and the brakes start acting. Delays are due to so many reasons here right from the pedal motion to uh, the, the hydraulics that is involved um, or the fluid that is involved and so on. Okay. So, I just want to point out that that time lag need to be understood and taken into account if you are looking at braking distance. So, what we are talking here is the braking distance when the force is felt, but it is not from the time the uh, vehicle or the, or the driver applies the brake and then starts braking. Okay. So, usually that is a factor, so we will not go into the details, I just want to point out that. Okay. So, we have covered quite a bit, we now know uh, about acceleration and braking in a passenger car. We will slightly deviate now, um, not that we are going to go away from the longitudinal dynamics, but we have to learn a lot more in longitudinal dynamics. We will talk about tyres, we will talk about uh, aerodynamic forces and so on, but before we go there, let us complete the topic by looking at a yeah, tractor trailer. Okay. This is a very important uh, vehicle today, uh, especially in a country like India becoming very popular. Of course, the number of axles increase, when, when the number of ax axles increase I would not be able to do the kind of calculation that I do here, because uh, the problem is not statically determinate. So, we are looking at it only from the point of view of deriving a simple equation on forces acting. Hence, we would restrict ourselves to a tractor trailer where you will see that the trailer has a, a one axle okay, and that the tractor has uh, sorry uh, yeah, tractor has two axles and that the tractor and the trailer are connected by means of what is called as the hitch point. There are a number of uh, uh, you know terminologies for this, 
Sometimes people call this as fifth wheel and so on. So we are, you know, that's the hitch point. Let's understand uh, what are the forces that can act okay, on this. And as I said in the last class, the reference for this is theory of ground vehicles by Wong. So we will move away from this after this class to look at, uh, as I said, tire dynamics. So let's now look at this. So let us look at what are the forces that are opposing exactly the same thing. There is no difference in the concept, absolutely the same. But only thing is that when I take moments, there are not more forces that come into picture. Okay. So let us just recapitulate what are the forces that are acting um, for the accelerating vehicle. One of our in great interest is to find out what are the reactions that take place in these axles, what we would call as front axle, what I would call as rear axle, I have to be consistent. If there is any confusion on the uh, terminology or on the notation, please let me know. I will be as consistent as possible, WS. Now, what are the forces that are acting? Of course, the aerodynamic forces, there are two aerodynamic forces that we take into account. One that is acting on the tractor, there is a tendency in the, in the industry to call this also as a horse. They call this as a horse because it is something like a horse drawn carriage. So when they say horse driving a trailer, okay, do not be carried away by it because it is a loose term that or, or a colloquial term that they use, okay, that is called a horse. So that is the RA1 is the um, aerodynamic forces that are acting okay, on the tractor. The similar aerodynamic force acts here and that is RA2. The other forces that are acting, you know it, the famous rolling resistance force, so that is that acts everywhere. On the, all the three, okay, the rolling resistance force. D'Alembert's force for acceleration, for deceleration it will just be opposite, same thing. The other force which is important are the hitch point forces, okay, simple mechanics, the hitch point forces, directions you have to be careful, okay, you can look at this from two perspectives, one from the tractor perspective and the other from the trailer perspective. So these are all very simple mechanics, you can understand that. So you be careful in putting down the hitch force, uh, hitch point forces as they are called. Remember that we are considering the, the weights and then the D'Alembert's forces of the tractor and the trailer separately. So that becomes the weight of the tractor and this becomes the weight of the trailer and the CG locations are written as H1, H2 and so on, right. Uh, we will make some simplifying assumptions, not that it is necessary, so that I need not write the equation in a full equation on the board, I will make some assumption. Here again, the concepts are simple, equations are going to be long, I am not going to spend much time, I am going, going to wind this up as soon as possible, so we will go to the next topic. Okay? So any questions, ask me. So I am going to just write down the, the final equations, okay, telling you how I got it. You can derive it yourself, straightforward. Okay. So the first task for us is to, is to find out what are the reaction forces that are acting onto this vehicle. Once we finish this, we will also go to the, to the braking which is very interesting okay. and that is the next step we are going to do. You can easily write down, why not you start writing down what would be the reaction uh, forces that would you know, result uh, or that would be the result of, of this kind of arrangement. Note that I put a point A. It is customary to take the moment about that point okay, uh, many times in order to find out 
uh, the forces okay so let's do that let's say that ws into l2 i would take uh, ws into l2 please note what i'm going to do is to separate out okay separate out in your mind you can build this up separate out the tractor and the trailer and then you know put the free body diagram this is this is just combined i just put it like this as i told you this is important separate out the tractor and the trailer when it's accelerating of course uh, f h i for the trailer will be in the other direction okay w h i won't change okay and uh, vice versa so or in other words there will be a support here for the uh, trailer okay so note that and accordingly change it okay in other words when i when i'm considering the trailer uh, part of it this will be in the other direction this will be in the in opposite direction and vice versa so well said very simple i'm going to write down only the final equation for ws okay this will be a good exercise for you verify it okay i'm going to just make a small assumption so that i don't need to write down a lot of things so i will write down h3 h2 l2 into w2 plus h2 w2 note i am taking all the moment about the point a which i have defined okay the hitch point forces okay that's the force which actually pulls the trailer so that will be opposed by of course all the other forces so that the hitch point force can be written as and that's the be very careful this with this plus and minus i am i don't want to every time give an explanation and confuse you but you would know how to write that okay so i am not going to do that but be very careful when you put a plus and when you put a minus one of the easiest ways of doing it is that when it is going uphill okay accelerating it is acting in the same direction as that of uh, the ra toward the accelerating forces when it's coming downhill okay the forces will be in the opposite direction so the direction of forces is determined whether it's a plus or a or a minus okay now using these two equations and substituting for whatever is in the brackets here i can write down ws to be w2 into d2 divided by l2 plus fr into h2 that's the reaction that happens at in the trailer the rear wheel of the trailer note that note that these vehicles are rear wheel driven or in other words that's the wheel which has the drive and braking happens in all three wheels so braking forces are applied to all three wheels on the word another word in, sorry in in other words that the driven wheel is this but the braking wheel is all three and so there's a distribution of the braking forces between these three wheels okay so the load at the hitch point of course all of you know how to calculate that that is the w2 minus ws because as i said the trailer is supported by now by the rear as well as at the hitch point and so can be written as w2 minus ws and that's equal to 1 minus d2 divided by l2 plus fr into h2 into w2 so maybe you can call that uh, that equation is 1 and that equation is 2 and that equation is 3 that equation is 4 and this equation is 5 and so on
we can write down this as a coefficient and call that as CHI we follow Wong uh, theory of ground vehicles and uh, just write that down as CHI. So now we shift to the tractor, we consider tractor as a free body uh, and draw the free body diagram for the tractor, do exactly the same thing okay, and find out the reaction forces in the front and the rear okay, again by taking moments and so on. So W R into here it is you need not take it about A, so W R into L1 is what uh, I am going to take. So, let me write the final result W1 L1 plus RA1 into HA1 plus H1A W1 by G plus or minus W1 H1 sin theta S F HI H3 plus L1 minus D1 W HI1 I divided by L1. Okay, that's WR. Uh, again, you can write down. You can apply equation one. Let me call that as six, and you can simplify this equation. Okay. Now, the technique is the same. So, what's the next step? We are going to simplify this by looking at the longitudinal forces and hence the longitudinal force F, the balance of the longitudinal force. What is the longitudinal force here? Traction force. Okay. So the longitudinal force which is a traction force has to now equilibrate all other forces that are acting which is again very straightforward. You can say that that is Ra1, I am not, I'm not going to write down, write down that equation, it is very simple and then it is that is the next force okay then w1 let me write it like this so that w1 that's the next force okay plus of course the rolling resistance force okay so we can yeah plus remember that we had a we had something called a drawbar pull and we removed it but now it becomes very important and this is very similar to the drawbar pull which we had used in the last class in one of the earlier classes. So that is the force that you have you can uh, substitute it and you can determine what would be the force or the max we can calculate what should be the maximum force okay substituting into this uh, expression the previous expression i can simplify this equation okay rearrange them and so on i'm going to skip that rearranging writing down and so on and I am going to only, only write this, the maximum force that can be supported by the, track, uh, by the tractive effort or by the rear wheel is obviously equal to like what we had written, we are lumping all the effects of the tyre into one number called mu into WR. <coughs> so the maximum is given by F max is equal to sorry, mu into WR substituting WR simplifying all these equations I can write F max to be I am writing the final form okay will be equal to mu into L1 W1 minus H1 into FR into W1 plus CHI Okay. 
So that gives you that gives you the maximum force that can be supported okay by a tractor semi trailer technique is exactly the same any questions yes uh, we are assuming h3 is equal to h2 right yeah but we are we are assuming all h is to be the the same which is not correct okay i agree this is just to write down laziness of writing down the equation that's all okay you can write down that uh, more elaborately putting down ha2 obviously obviously ha2 is not a, going to be equal to ha1 ha3 is going to be very different from h uh, sorry h3 is going to be very different from h2 it's going to be different from h1 and so on agree just to write it down this is not correct okay you can you you need not make that assumption there's nothing in that assumption you can substitute it and write down the final form the equation bec will become long concepts are simple nothing will change clear you are absolutely right that kind of a assumption is not is only for a classroom deriving the equations and in practice that won't be correct okay so uh, that is for traction we quickly finish breaking in this class so that uh, we will move forward because it's longitudinal dynamics we have to move we have to accelerate so we will look at breaking here any other questions any qu anything okay again very simple dynamics is what we are going to use for bre for breaking okay what we are going to do now is to divide this into three categories we are going to look at tractor we are going to look at <coughs> the trailer and we are going to look at the tractor trailer together so that is the first thing that we are going to do we are going to get in other words we are going to get three sets of equations by considering these three systems or these three scenarios that is the number one number two is that we are going to look at sigma f x sigma f y and the moment about an axis which is perpendicular to the board so in other words each for the each of these scenarios we are going to get three sets of equations okay and so we are going to get nine equations then we will see how we can simplify it so that we can find out what is the loads that are acting or the normal reactions at the three wheels so this is the strategy why are we interested ultimately or what is our goal our goal is to find out what would be the reactions on the wheels our goal is to find out these three right why are we find finding this out because we want to make sure there is a locking sequence so the most important thing in braking is what happens when these wheels lock so i have to find out when these wheels lock so i have to find out what these are so that's my first step that's why i did all these things or i am going to do all those things please note that when i look at all these 3 wf i'm um, sorry 3 w's wf wr and ws okay i will multiply this with mu in order to look at the maximum braking uh, force that is possible before the wheel locks so in other words derivation is pretty simple in other words what we are ultimately interested in is whether the front wheel locks the rear wheel locks or the trailer wheel locks these are the three things right so in other words what can be the sequence at which we can have locking would determine how we are going to distribute the 
breaking forces clear okay now what happens when the front wheel locks the situation is exactly similar to what we had before we are going to loss, lose directional stability or, or, or directional control okay so we are going to lose directional control and the vehicle is going to go okay forward what happens when remember that scenario it's exactly similar okay when the rear wheel locks when the rear wheel locks remember that the whole force goes to the front okay and use direct yaw and so directional stability is lost okay now what happens here in this case when when we have the this wheel it locks here in this case what is going to happen is very interesting the second one so let's, let's let me come back to this when this locks let's see what happens even we saw that as directional stability but here there's going to be small difference let's see what happens i'm going to break this okay and there is going to be this guy is now moving forward okay he is not because he if he has to be stopped that has to be stopped and so on so when this guy uh, locks more important effect is what is called as jackknifing because this kind of yawing which is in two wheeler okay has to be looked at more closely because there are two forces that may be act acting on either side so may or may not happen we do not know but when this locks there is going to be jackknifing okay one going into the other that would be the uh, case and that would be a more uh, important or dangerous situation okay that would happen but we can't talk about stability because that is for two wheeler uh, two um, axle uh, passenger car it was very straightforward okay so when this locks there's going to be jackknifing okay one th there will be a difference in the uh, deceleration between the two and so one drives into the other what happens when this locks when this locks okay there is going to be please note that it is at the hitch point this is something like uh, you know supported here and uh, this has a hinge there and so when this locks okay this whole this is going to sway and that's going to be dangerously swaying okay perpendicular to the board <coughs> so the effects are such that each one of them has is important of course one is more dangerous than the other two of course i said that locking in the front is the least of this danger why because the driver will be able to find out that he is going to lock or uh, his wheel is going to lock so he has a feel so he will be able to correct it so that is the least of the problems jackknifing is the worst okay and this is also very dangerous especially for vehicles which are coming uh, or which are in the road other vehicles because the whole uh, trailer is going to sway okay so this is it's very important that these concepts are taken into account so which locks first so i would not allow this to lock this would first lock no issues why are we talking this because we want to distribute the total braking forces so this fine because i can find out what's happening and then this locks and then finally this locks would be a situation which would be useful in order to decide what should be the braking forces of course this is only to understand the concepts if you look at abs uh, 
which we will quickly run through after understanding the behavior of the tires you would appreciate the, the ABS in vehicles because this kind of situations locking situations uh, how they the ABS handles this kind of locking situation becomes important and the concepts will be very well understood at that point. Okay. So, now what is my goal I, I just want to write down the three sets of equations I will do that right now and then write down what would be the w's that would happen in these three uh, axes. So, I am considering first the tractor. So, let me consider the tractor first. The tractor W f plus W r this is the I said the sigma of forces equal to 0 this is the vertical forces that are acting. So, W f plus W r there are two vertical forces the weight plus the h point. Then we will consider the braking forces the braking force uh, which acts in the um, Oh yeah, this would we will consider that as the x us as usual, and the other one as the z direction, and that as the y. So this is the x direction forces, the braking forces. So CR into WF plus CR into WR. That's the coefficient of, of braking. Is equal to as I said, d by g into W1. Please note that in braking f is in the opposite direction, so it should be plus into f h i right. So, that is the second equation and the third equation that I am going to write is the moment equation in the uh, y direction. Okay. So, that is the set of equations for 1, 2 and 3 for the tractor. We have similar set of equation for the trailer sometimes called as semi trailer because there is one wheel there. So, anyway I will call this as trailer and again the same set or the same directions is what I am looking at. nothing difficult the two directions that is the 4, 5 and 6. Then I said that I am going to take the, the tractor trailer combination okay, and write down another 3 sets of equations. that is in the z direction wf plus wr plus ws is equal to w1 plus w2 and then the total braking force that is acting 
those are what, what I would call as the breaking coefficients is equal to the that is my f is equal to m a equation. Okay. Of course, you know that d is the deceleration. So, the signs are taken into account once I say that that is the deceleration. Okay, so that is seven, eight, and nine. So these equations are now, you know, okay, solved in order to get W of and wr as i told you i'm going to write down only the final expression okay so the tractor so i have to find out wf wr and ws and i'm going to just write down the final equation for this okay you can derive that the final equation for wf it's it's a long equation multiplying, substituting and all that doing all this. Okay, I promise that there is going to be a long equation and it happens to be. So, now we will write down W r, so obtained from these, these equations. and W s happens to be W 2 
so that becomes 12. Okay. So we need to of course know CSC and CF and CR and so on in order to solve the equation. The key equation is this, once you know this you can go back to those 9 equations okay, in order to find out WF and WR as well. So you need not go through this, you can as well you know from this equation once you know WS you can go to one of those 9 equations and you can determine WF and WR. Right. So we will uh, stop here just for uh, you know assimilate this. We will quickly maybe spend 5 10 minutes on the distribution of uh, the breaking force in the next class and then we will move to tire dynamics right. So, we will stop here for today.